quick revision video for Bourne Harbour Cycles. So essentially a Bourne Harbour Cycle is an enthalpy cycle and it uses Hess's law to say that the enthalpy change for this root here from elements to the solid ionic lattice is equal to the sum of the steps going the other way. So the enthalpy change for the green root is the same as the sum of all the steps in the pink root. And what we're going to do is we're going to use a born harbour cycle to solve for an enthalpy change that we don't know. So before we go into the actual cycle itself, let's look at the processes involved and we need to say whether they are exothermic or endothermic. So enthalpy change of formation is in there. So that's the enthalpy change when one mole of a compound is formed from its elements in their standard states. That's an exothermic process. Enthalpy change of atomization. Enthalpy change when one mole of gaseous atoms is formed from its element in its standard state. That's an endothermic process. Energy needs to be supplied to carry that process out. I've included bond enthalpy because OCR have used it a couple of times instead of atomization. So that's the energy required to break one mole of a covalent bond into separate atoms in the gas state, endothermic as well. First ionization energy is the energy required to create one mole of gaseous one plus ions from gaseous atoms. That's endothermic because we've got to remove electron from the attraction of the nucleus. Second ionization energy is going from gaseous 1 plus ions to gaseous 2 plus ions, endothermic again. First electron affinity is kind of the opposite of first ionization energy, so that's creation of one mole of gaseous 1 minus ions from gaseous atoms. That's exothermic because the electron will be attracted to the atom, so it will release energy. The second electron affinity is creating gaseous 2 minus ions from gaseous 1 minus ions. That's an endothermic process because you're having to add an electron, negatively charged, to an 1 minus ion, so they will repel each other. And finally, lattice enthalpy is the enthalpy of change when one mole of an ionic lattice is formed from its gaseous ions, exothermic. So we'll look at a simple born harbour cycle first. So the easiest one is the one for sodium chloride. And you'll notice that I've populated the elements and the solid ionic lattice. So remember we've got two roots, the green one and the pink one. So if we look at the green root first, that is going from elements to one mole of a compound. So that's the enthalpy change of formation. Now before I go to this one here, I just want to populate this one and hopefully it will make the rest of these make more sense. So I'm putting the gaseous ions there because when we combine these two gaseous ions we, we create the lattice so that's the lattice enthalpy. So essentially what we need to do is turn the sodium solid into one mole of Na plus gaseous and likewise that half a mole of Cl2 gas needs to be turned into one mole of a Cl minus gaseous ion. So we can only do one thing at a time, so each step reflects one change. And I haven't mentioned yet that down arrows are exothermic processes, and I'm using the red font for that. Up arrows are endothermic processes. So first thing I'm going to do is turn that sodium solid into sodium gas. So that's the atomization of sodium. We're now going to deal with that half a mole of chlorine gas. We're going to turn it into a chlorine gaseous atom. So that's the atomization of chlorine. So you can see we've now got gaseous atoms, but we need gaseous ions. So we'll deal with the sodium first. So we're turning the sodium into a 1 plus ion from the atom in the gaseous state. So that's the first ionization energy of sodium. And notice the electron there, that has to be included. So don't forget that, that's a common mistake. And then all we're going to do now is combine that electron with the chlorine atom, the gaseous chlorine atom, and create that chloride ion gaseous. So that's the first electron affinity of chlorine. And 
the delta H of formation, the green change, is equal to the sum of all the pink changes. So if we were missing, say, let's say the lattice enthalpy, you would just rearrange and solve for that. I'm going to look at a couple more, slightly more complicated ones. So the next one we'll look at is magnesium chloride. Again, I've populated the elements and the ionic lattice. So there's the enthalpy change of formation. So just as before, we atomize the magnesium in this case. So we've got a gaseous magnesium atom. Now, if you notice here, we've got chlorine, Cl2, not half a mole of Cl2. So we're going to produce two moles of gaseous chlorine atoms. So that's two times the atomization of chlorine. We're now going to ionize the magnesium to its two plus ion. So that requires the first ionization energy and the second ionization energy. Notice there's the two electrons because what we're going to do now is we're going to add them to the two moles of chlorine atoms, gaseous chlorine atoms, and form two moles of gaseous chloride ions. So effectively, we're carrying out the first electron affinity but we're doing it for two moles worth, and so therefore we would double that. And then finally, we've got the gaseous ions, combine them together, so that's the lattice enthalpy. And again, the green root, the enthalpy change for the green root, is equal to the sum of all those other steps, the pink ones. And the last one I'll look at is for magnesium oxide, so it looks a bit different again. So again, we've got enthalpy change of formation, so notice we've got half a mole of O2, a bit like half a mole of Cl2. So it's kind of going to be easier in that respect, but there's a bit of a twist here. So atomize the magnesium. So we'll turn it into a gaseous atom. Now atomize the oxygen, and that's going to give us one mole of gaseous oxygen atoms. We now need to turn the magnesium into its two plus ion, but it's two steps to that. So what we're going to do now, if you think about oxygen, it needs to form a 2 minus ion. So the first thing we do is we do the first electron affinity of oxygen. So that's going to give us these particles here. But we now need to add this electron to the O minus gaseous ion. That requires energy, so it kicks back up again for the second electron affinity of oxygen. Now we've got our gaseous ions, combine them. There's the lattice enthalpy for magnesium oxide. And again, the, the green root, the enthalpy change for the green root, is the sum of all of the others. And if you notice, all of those pink arrows are running in the direction of the root. We'll finish with the factors affecting lattice enthalpies. The greater the ionic charge, the more exothermic the lattice enthalpy is going to be. And that's because there's a greater attraction, a stronger attraction between the ions. And then the final one, the smaller the ionic radius, the more exothermic the lattice enthalpy. Again, smaller ions, there would be a stronger attraction between the ions, the smaller they are.